This is a growing guide on how to grow cucumbers and how I grew Persian baby cucumbers. I got the seeds from Botanical Interests and the packet only came with eight seeds and somehow I didn't even follow the instructions carefully, very loosely to be honest with you. I got at least 30 cucumbers out of this and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. So these are the basic recommendations. I compiled this from online and I listed my sources below. I myself didn't follow this strictly and I broke a few of these rules. And I'm going to explain exactly what I did as I grew these cucumbers. This is day 5 and they're already sprouting. I started this indoors under grow lights. I used seed starting soil for miracle Grow. Also, each seed is an inch deep in each pod. I didn't put multiple seeds in each pod like others recommend to do because I didn't want to thin. I want to give each seed a chance to live. I misted them every day with water until they sprouted. Then I misted them every other day or so. I should mention I started growing this way too early, two months before the day of last frost actually. But this will cause problems later on because it will still be cold outdoors where they will finally be transplanted. Day 14. They got too big for their pods so I transplanted them in 4 inch pots. Tip. It is ideal to sow seeds directly outdoors. Don't grow them in pots or pods like I did. I should have avoided as much as possible transplanting to avoid root shock. I could have just directly put the seeds in these pots. And when the weather got better, I could put new seeds directly in the garden outside. But I did it this way and they all managed to survive. At this point, I watered them every other day. Day 21. So far, so good. They look pretty big, so I'm going to try to transplant them outside. Tip. When getting your plants ready from indoors to outdoors, harden them off strictly. I did this very casually. A few hours here and there outside to get them prepared was better than nothing, I thought. This was a mistake. I should have hardened them off on a strict schedule to gradually get them used to being outside. That means I should have taken them out for one hour a day for a few days, then build it up to two, then four, then all day before transplanting. I'll make a video about hardening off to get into further details. Day 23. I got the soil ready for a raised bed before transplanting. The soil we used was the General Mills mix sourced from local big box hardware stores. Lowe's and Home Depot, and that seemed good enough. The Mel's mix is basically a combination of peat moss, vermiculite, and compost at equal parts ratio. For the nutrients, initially we put in fish fertilizer when we transplanted. Later on, when they were producing cucumbers, we side dressed with blood meal and ironite. I have no idea what the pH level was at this point, and we never got around to measuring it. We're going to attempt to transplant they have to be one feet apart. We have to really make sure we don't disrupt the roots. I'm, I'm, I'm squeezing the uh, thing, this pot here. I'm going to use a spoon to really make sure this is a very seamless operation. I want this guy to think that he never even left. It was so cold that the average temperature at that time was 67 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 19 degrees Celsius, with the lowest being 39 degrees Fahrenheit, 3 degrees Celsius, at night. And remember, the temperature should be well into the 70s degrees Fahrenheit, or 20 degrees Celsius, for this to work according to all the guides I found online. Plus, it was extremely windy outside. Only three of my plants ended up surviving. We were very lucky to even have that. I should have waited for the time to be right to get more cucumbers, but I thought I could take a chance. Day 40. Some did not survive. It was probably because it was too windy and too cold. We tried to hold them up with skewer sticks and hope they clinged onto the trellis we made, but they didn't. And on one really windy day, we had to board up the raised bed with wood to shelter them from the harsh wind. We believe that is what made the remaining three survive. We made only one trellis and haven't had time yet to make another one. So in the meantime, we had to use these skewers to hold them up. Day 45. We had to hurry to make a trellis for these guys. They look like they're searching for something to grip onto. Day 56. Finally, the last day of frost has passed. I'm starting to see small signs of cucumbers coming along and they're somehow gripping onto the vines. They all vined very nicely on their own accord but I should have used clips to make it more neat looking and give them more space to produce more cucumbers. 
I started using these Velcro strips for my new cucumber plants and they work just fine. Tip, get clips for your cucumbers. Day 75, success. We finally have a few cucumbers and I make a nice salad. Look at this one, look how big this one is. Day 87. I still have a ton of cucumbers and I leave one in an attempt to save a seed. Day 109. I can safely say at this point that this is the end of them producing cucumbers and the plant looks like it is at the end of its life. I'm still waiting for one cucumber that I left there to ripen and turn yellow so I can save the seeds. I really want to save these seeds because they were truly the best cucumbers I ever had. I grew these cucumbers two months before the last day of frost and still somehow I managed to get 30 really good cucumbers. None of them were bitter, they all tasted good. I could have got more if I had waited but in zone 9a, the winters they're cold but they have some hot days which is why the cucumbers survive and I'm going to try to grow them year round because I don't like the grocery store cucumbers. They have all this wax on it and you have to peel it off which is the best part of the cucumber. So by growing this year round, I don't have to peel off the skin and I get to enjoy cucumbers year round. And for that reason, I highly recommend everyone trying to grow cucumbers.